hello everyone in our today's video we're going to deploy this amazing e-commerce website in Vercel. as you may know this e-commerce website is made by nextjs and the repo link it will be available in the description so you're going to clone this entire thing then we should be able to run from our local machine and then i will let you know how to configure the setup for it and after that we'll be able to deploy it in Vercel. so what kind of feature we need to commence after developing in Vercel? as you see is the at uh, the beginning of that phone skin and if you click in the shop now you see you're coming with all the products availability here with that particular page on that products you can add to cart from here you can increase the quantity and also if it's uh, less than one the button is visible because you can't delete from here so then let's go back in the shop you see the product card also available here and if you click any of the single products as you see it will take you directly in the single product view feature and here you can find to toggle through the image setup and also you can see little bit details of this product particularly you will be able to add from here as well now let's try to make a uh, to view our card once we are trying to view the card as you see we are not able to go why please log in to view your card so we must have to log in to properly viewing our card so how we can make that so let's just go back here and we'll try to click on that and now we have a separate set we can log in via email password we can also log in via oauth so we will try with oauth login implementation if we click here uh, it will redirect us to our oauth login implementation page where we can sign in with github google or facebook let's try with the google and if we click with any of our account it will redirect back to our home page as you see now we can view our uh, profile and can do any other things first let's just view the card and this is our card we can add more products from here we can decrease more we can also delete the product from here so as you see we have three products right now so and this our price is 559.96 and if we just check uh, our checkout is 183 is our last payment available here let's just click on that particular checkout and now as you see we are redirected to the stripe checkout page which is having 559.96 we can provide our mail we can provide the test card which will be 4242 then a dummy valid date 123 will be the cvc we will provide my name and then pay after paying we should be able to receive the payment in our stripe use the test card only because otherwise it will not work so the test card it will only take because our a stripe payment is running on test mode so after payment is done as you see i'm returning back in my success screen with the id let's just go back in the home and as you can see here we'll be able to receive that payment which is 559.96 so our everything is working perfectly fine we should be able to start uh, adapting what is need to be adapted so let's just go back here and the link it will be in the description so i'm gonna just go and get to clone this particular thing and in my build folder you can take any empty folder i'll open my terminal here so on that terminal particularly what i will do is that to just uh, clone this particular website which will be git clone then paste the repo link the link which i have been uh, copied from there put ls you see is already available let's cd into sophie underscore yt let's open in our code editor let's open perfectly to open that you can just simply write code uh, space dot or you can also go inside that directory here and if it's just set up perfectly you can also open it with the code it depends on you how you're gonna make things up so after cloning there will be a uh, some of the important things you need to be make sure first let's just uh, make everything to start the pro uh, process we need to install all the dependency as you see it's already described here what kind of things you may require you need to clone you need to npm install so we need to run this command here just to go with that so npm install it will install all the packages if you just uh, make it bigger as you see redux toolkit is try framer motion next next also there is a variable a much more dependency here which it will just install as per the model or as per the command we have been sent here package install to run our application let's just type that npm run dev also you will find this command is available here what kind of things you need to just to make comments so that's the thing set up and now if we just open it we need to just run that in our localhost 3000 if we just simply run it as you see just localhost 3000 here our application will run 
So now get everything done very much quickly. What you need to just and the word is that to grab this all secret like next secret, GitHub ID, GitHub secret, client ID, Google uh, secret, and Stripe publishable key, Stripe secret key, Facebook client ID. So how you can grab those portions, how you can actually fetch those things. Uh, I will just tag one link, a video link in the description. You can see in the right top corner. So where which video will available to let you know how you can figure this out. So if you just grab like uh, catch those things just to get back all the id all setup it has been done here in that api with the auth and also in the checkout api as you see everything going to be work perfectly just you need to decide what kind of parameter or which id you are going to be declared so that's it if you do that well it will work perfectly fine so now let's see if we receive okay as you see it's loading properly so means is trying to fetch the product so instead in the first initialization it will take a bit of time but in the second hit it will work perfectly and images it will load a little bit lazy because we keep it lazy loading so that it will not stuck in a way so what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna just grab my previous project all the details which i have been here with me and you need to collect all the available details here so that it will work perfectly so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna grab this all secret key and then i'm gonna close that env file now we can just uh, see a new page here okay add to card i think we can do all the feature which you have been previously done now if we click on the login okay here because this setup you will just go with the multiples uh, like a single setup here because that's the one i have made some changes so if you just can log out and you can see here right now we have that email but in this application you'll just get only this portion which can you make OAuth authentication so let's sign in again okay i think we're good to go so now after signing, we will do the same procedure which we have been done to create a payment instances to see if everything is working fine. So what I refer you, fill all the credentials which is just required in the .env file, then you will be able to go to go. So it's 98.35. Let's just create a checkout section here. Okay. So at the first instances, don't worry about it because it will take a bit of time as it will just go and configure all the setup. As you see, the post request is already have been made in that checkout route here where you can see it will just configure that which auth URL you are passing on that next auth URL. That's it. So it will track that one and then I'm going to make that checkout instances. As you see, we redirect to our checkout portion here. So I will do the same thing which I have been did before and that one to uh, put that test card and then CVC number with the name and create the payment instances. So after having been uh, paid, so what it gonna do, it gonna take me back in my local host that success screen, which the screen will be responsible for this portion, which is the success at that one. So I'm not going to go and demonstrate how the application work. I'm going to provide the link description by which you will pro uh, get how you can toggle through that, how you can modify that so on. So in our today's build, I'm going to show you how you can deploy it in Varsal. So now we're having that project, right? You are having this entire thing in your local machine, but there is a problem. What is that? So if we just used to just go and just try to make that as to see like provide that git status you're gonna see we are within in our application which we should not be because still you are tracking my this repo the repo that that one is over here as you see the payment is success means everything working perfectly so still you are aligned with that repo which you should not so you need to deploy it as your own and how you can do that to just to remove my application from your repo now here as you see there is a dot git file is available either you can delete it from here or in the terminal you can run this command which will be rm dash rf dot git so it's going to remove that git folder permanently so if i just make that git status here uh, status and as you see now it's indicating me to my local server like where the git is already initially store so now what we need to do create a git init command to initialize the git in my project then git add dot to add each and everything directly from here so now as you see as this 
so i think so as you see that dot uh env file is included here with that add as i'm not uh just excluding here so it will directly go in my repo there so what i prefer you people to just grab this thing around and also inject those everything and push directly in the uh versal so that like in the github so and also your repo must be in a private repo otherwise it will be a catastrophic if it's a public repo again you need to exclude that dot env file like you need to include it in that dot git ignore and then don't push that environment variable here so we need to just copy that variable and directly inject there but if you push every single properties from here that versal will automatically redirect it from there so i will just make that git commit m i'll just make that initial commit so now it's time to create one repository here by which i'm gonna just deploy my, app, my application so i'm gonna create a test repository or uh, let's see sophie test okay now what i'm gonna do as my env file is available so i'm gonna make that repository as private only me and the permission which i'm gonna provide it to my collaborators only they'll be able to view that so i'm gonna come on this line just to go through and connect my repo with that okay uh connection establish then i'm gonna make that branch as the main branch and after that i'm gonna run that command to push everything from that main to my github repo as you see it will just take a bit of time okay done if i reload here you're gonna see all over the code and all over the parameters is available here even my dot env file again i'm saying if you are making in a from the public one not in private repo don't send your dot env file around here what you need to do you need to manually provide that one i'm going to show you where you need to inject manually need to inject that in that env file so now let's go in the versal as we need to deploy our application and from that add new and whenever you are in versal you need to have an account and then you need to go in dashboard and from that dashboard click on add new and from here you can add your new project so in that versal you will be see uh, the first initialization the last one which is updated recently it will be in the top so we will import that each and everything going to be a get from there okay let's deploy now the deployment is on the process so you can just go and check through the build logs as you see it's installing the dependencies okay okay now everything is same good to go so creating an optimized production build i think it will be uh yeah i think there will be no problem at all but still we cannot be sure till it's been succeeded so as you see the environment variable is loaded so you no need to just manually inject there because it's already loaded here okay everything seems uh, normal and we are redirect to our dashboard okay yeah we have been done that one so everything is seems perfect okay so that's our domain let's open that in our just test terminal here so now what is mandatory if you are not pushing your env file so if you are not providing that you need to go in the settings over here and in the settings as you see there is an environment variables tab so you need to click on that tab and here first you need to provide the key name then you need to provide the value as per if we see in over here we have next.url like you need to first provide that next.url and then you need to provide that active actual setup which it will be uh, sophie test versal app then you need to provide this tab here so that it can go and redirect the value over there and can find what all are the differentiate is happening so now let's see here okay our application is seems working perfectly if we just reload okay quite good if we just try to click on login okay try login with google uh, okay because it's a mismatching the redirect uri so means we need to provide that uri in our application layer so first let's go in that uh we should be going in that google cloud console where our application is headed because we need to manage that uri or manage that application layer so if we just go into details we need to provide that that t test versal so this flow this entire 
flow need to be go there so okay don't worry we will fix that in a bit so in that cloud console let's just go in my console and you need to relate it to that the key from which app you are generating that github id uh, sorry google id and google secret and both for github and google you need to do the same so that's my application here so from this application in the uh left side so what i'm gonna do is that from the api i will go in the credential and on that credential particularly i'm gonna add the setup which i am requiring here i'll minimize that as it will just reveal my secret which is available here so now as you see authorized javascript origins so here we need to provide that uri or not here so here you need to be coming so let's just roll back here I'm gonna make it bigger now this one should be injecting this one I'll go in our first tab here so I'm gonna just copy this portion and I'm gonna go back my API again here I'm gonna provide that URI this should not be in the included also this one and after that I need to provide that API auth callback Google and save so after saving it should be available to perfectly working in our application i will hit one reload here just to be justify that one without having any issue let's click on that and sign in with google again uh it's still mismatch so i think we need to find out which app we are using right now i actually added it in a different account so now again i'm gonna add it here which is responsible for this account okay now again the same procedure and paste i think this time it will work perfectly so give it a time for saving this hit reload okay try to log in again with the google okay now as you see now it's giving me that same clarification here and from this purposes i can add to card okay we are good to go and then if we just roll back here and there will be a problem at, in this indication because as you see that next auth url what you need to do it will redirect us to our local host what you need to do is to just provide this url here and then push your env file right so i think it will may also interjecting as we provide that next url so we'll try this one first let's see what is going to indicate so 215.31 it will be our uh, first payment from this application okay i will put a different email admin and then okay so pay now let's see in which page is redirecting either we need to manually interject or it will catch as you see it's catching in localhost 3000 because what's happening here in our env file is indicating is localhost 3000 so if you are pushing your env file please because first it gonna check your dot env file then it will go to check the main file first it's gonna load this portion and after that it will just check whatever the env file you are implemented here so that's the problem if you are pushing that env file everything should be available this file otherwise your application will not work perfectly as it's just directing in our localhost 3000 if that one our application is not running it should collapse or it can get a breakdown there so i think that's the simple setup how you can grab this entire portfolio like entire e-commerce website from this this repo uh, where is our repo let's just see i'm gonna bring it here right now so you can clone it and just uh, upload all the dot env injection and then it will directly you can inject or deploy that one in Versal in netlify doesn't matter wherever the next.js or react.js project is supported for deployment you can deploy it there so i think that's the easy way how you can clone that how you can grab this and then how you can deploy as your own so i think it will be much more helpful for you to having this kind of project in your arsenal and by the way everything is working here as you see the search so everything is good to go so feel free to have a good touch up here to understand a bit better and make it more creative and deploy it as your own and let me know in the comments whatever new you are recording from me and i'm gonna see you in next video